Good evening, everyone, and welcome. We are so glad you have come to join us for this webinar on Detroit Public Schools Community District Examination High Schools application webinar. My name is Monica DeGarmo. I have the great privilege of working in the Office of Enrollment for DPSCD and serving as your moderator and information provider throughout um, this webinar together. So without further ado, we want to be as respectful of your time as we possibly can. So we're going to go ahead and dive right in. Um, we'll do a few housekeeping items though. Excellent. So first off, if you haven't already, please go ahead and mute your audio just to ensure that everyone can hear the great information that's being shared. Number two, you are certainly welcome to use the chat box, which you should hopefully see on your screen. There's a, a dialogue box you can click on and please feel free to answer to input your questions throughout the presentation and we will um, respond throughout and at the end as well. If you lose connection or you have to leave early, that's OK, no problem. You are always welcome to give our office a call. Our number is listed there. Um, or you certainly can send us an email uh, at this email listed exam.schools at DetroitK12.org. Um, and finally, we hope by the end of this presentation, you will have bookmarked or maybe even memorized uh, this website, DetroitK12.org slash exam schools, which we've tried to populate with lots of really helpful information. Wonderful. So here's our agenda, um, everyone, for this evening. Number one, we are going to dive in a little bit into district priorities and who we are as DPSCD. We'll touch on kind of what learning looks like for our families today. Uh, we'll do an overview of exam high schools just to kind of give you a big picture of who these schools are and about this cohort. And then what you're probably all here for, I promise, we'll give ample time for our stellar exam high school uh, staff to share um, personally with you about the fantastic schools that they have, and they're really excited to share that with you. Um, and then we'll, we'll hop over to application requirements and scoring. We'll touch on support and resources that are available to you. And then finally, we'll close with where can you go to get more information. Okay, so district priorities. Um, everyone on this call, everyone who you will hear from, are so proud of their individual schools, but we also take great pride in being part of Detroit Public Schools Community District as a whole. So just briefly, we wanna hit on these five priorities that all of us here are really working towards, um, including the schools that you'll be hearing from today. So number one, transformative culture. Um, for us, that looks like a number of things, but for example, we have nearly 90 parent-teacher associations um, and over 80 school advisory councils. So what that means is we believe that yes, we as district staff um, are here to provide the best education we can for students, but we also know it takes a village. So we have fantastic community partners, faith-based partners um, that have come together to really support the education of our students. In terms of outstanding achievement, you may have already seen this in the news, but just to give one highlight, um, we are so proud and yet not surprised um, that at all grade levels, our district students have actually outpaced the, the grade prof the proficiency rather of subject subjects across grade levels um, compared to students across the state of Michigan. So hopefully just a quick stat to show you that the needle is moving and we have bright, talented students that um, are not just working towards improvement, they are improving and growing. Um, when it comes to whole child commitment, one highlight that we want to share with you tonight is that we know, and especially many of you who are on this call are probably stellar students, um, but we know the hard subjects are, are important, the core sciences. We also know that things like art and music are just as important. So we're really proud to say that um, about three years ago, we had about 50% of our classes that offered art and music, and now we're at 100% across the board that are providing those classes. Moving on to exceptional talent. Again, you may have seen this in the news, but we um, are thrilled to say that we are offering um, a $10,000 increase for our teacher salary, which is actually the highest in Michigan for a starting teacher. And that really just speaks to our commitment that we're not looking for mediocrity. Uh, we're looking for the best of the best for our students because that's what they deserve. 
And then finally, responsible stewardship. So just to give you one example, all of our students, um, of course, received a device during COVID um, that they can continue to use with Internet access provided. OK, so the big question learning today, what does that look like? So um, we're not going to take time to read through all these bullet points, but we certainly encourage you to go to our website, DetroitK12.org slash return to schools that has videos and lots of helpful information, on all these things. Um, but I do just want to highlight a couple a couple items for you. So certainly safety protocols. We have a very detailed plan that's not not just written, but is being enacted on an everyday basis, and we're really proud of that. Uh, technology support, you can see here listed, we provide everything from emotional, mental health support, we know that's huge right now, um, to the more technical things like my device isn't working, what do I do? Um, so those supports are in place, it's a huge benefit of being part um, of DPSCD as a whole. Face-to-face -face learning, um, we are working with staff who are available, um, but at the end of the day, the biggest thing that was important to us is the health and safety of our family, our staff and our students. And we're following the protocols and the best practices um, that are told to us through the, C uh, the C CDC. Um, that's a mouthful, I'll say that three times, CDC, uh, the State Department of Health um, and the Federal Health Department. Online learning is available for all students. Like we mentioned, we do offer a one to one device for every single student. Um, and then last but not least, we're really excited that we are offering learning centers. So for all of our schools, including high schools um, that are not in a place where they can provide safe face to face learning, um, they are open for students to come and do their online classes at that school. All right, so we don't have a drum roll, but you can go ahead and imagine. So now we're, we'll dive into what you know. We know you're really excited to hear. So here are our examination high schools um, for the 2021 to 2022 school year, and we are going to just list them off. So we'll go ahead and hop to our next slide. Perfect. So, you know, for some of you who are listening in, you might see um, so some new faces, if you will, new names, new logos. So just to lift some off brief briefly, we have Cass Technical High School, Communication and Media Arts High School, which is our new one for the upcoming school year. So we're very excited to have them in this cohort. We have Martin Luther King Jr. Senior High School, Renaissance, Southeastern, and then finally the school at Mary Grove. So we have a traditional college prep program. Some of our, um, I'll call them like a la, a la carte programs, like dual enrollment, our um, career pathway now, which we're excited about that, having our digital media arts program, and then having AP courses, of course our honors track, all of these gives the students that want to compete more or want to have a more rigorous experience, those options are there for them. Southeastern is a great option for a lot of parents in our district and on the vicinity. We are an examination high school as well as a neighborhood high school. We are the best of both worlds. The students have options of, of participating in one of three pathway programs. We have a business pathway program. We have an advanced manufacturing, which includes early industry level certifications. They can get college credit, dual enrollment, as well as getting hands-on activities and internships through our partners at uh, Chrysler and other uh, industry uh, leaders in, in, our, in our area. Uh, we also offer AP courses, we have uh, film classes, we have choir, as well as a very strong um, core area of maths, social studies, English, and science. You know what I like about King is that we are comprehensive and examination. That anything that a child may ever want to experience, they may have that opportunity. Dr. Beatty, 
our newest superintendent. He also slated King to have the sports management marketing medicine program. That's huge. I love the fact that the school at Mary Grove has a focus on social justice. So we're raising up students who are critical thinking, critical thinkers and problem solvers, as well as uh, a focus on engineering and uh, human centered design. I actually have a degree in electrical engineering and then decided to become a teacher. And so I feel like this school really brings together elements from my personal background, as well as what I believe in as as an educator. And I'll also say just as as a black woman who's inspiring, uh, hopefully inspiring and motivating students to really pursue science, uh, technology, engineering and math, as well as design. We're looking for leaders here and we build and define leaders and leadership uh, roles. So our students are involved and we have over uh, probably 30 clubs and organizations at the school. Uh, we have clubs that deal with our different core group areas. So in English, math, science and social studies clubs. So we have things like um, poetry clubs and book clubs. We have uh, STEM clubs. Uh, we have art clubs. We have um, clubs in math, a, a club that's called Math Agriculture, which deals with um, math and agriculture kind of together. So they kind of made a name called Math Agriculture. I mean, you name it and we have it. If it's of interest of you, we probably have that club here available for you to, to be a part of. The curriculums are rigorous and we don't expect all students here to be straight A students. We want you to be a well-rounded student, academically, socially, emotionally, everything that it takes to make a well-rounded student. I'm student body president. Um, I'm the captain of the church team. I have like the highest college credits right now. I have 34 college credits. I love CMA because it allows students to be their self. What makes a crusader a crusader is that we never back down from a challenge. What I like about the school at Mary Gulf is it challenged, the school challenged me to become better. The students here are hard workers who all have the common goal of success. I want to be someone that can represent the school well. Wonderful. Okay, Mark is our behind the scenes tech guru. So thanks to Mark for queuing that up for us. Um, I hope if you're just on the edge of your seat and like, Monica, I'm ready to apply. Wonderful. Um, hang tight. We're now going to hear from our schools and then at the very end, we will definitely dive into the details of how you can go about applying. So um, without further ado, it's my pleasure to now introduce Assistant Principal Tiffany Cox from Cass Technical High School. Well, good afternoon or good evening, everyone. And on behalf of Principal Lisa Phillips, um, it is a pleasure to be with you. Um, I am a proud graduate of Cass Tech back in the 1900s, and I'm excited to share with you a little bit about what Cass has to offer. We are an international baccalaureate school, and we offer a myriad of AP and IB courses for our students as far as advanced placements. We have student academic programs, as you see listed, ranging from graphic arts to business, chemical and, biolog um, chemical and biological uh, curriculums, instrumental music, band and orchestra, as well as Wayne County dual enrollment programs, where we're excited to say that we've graduated over 200 students within the last 10 years from the Wayne County program. In addition to these offerings at Cast Tech, we have a host over 75 uh, different clubs and organizations that partner with both our academics and also our social and extracurricular, such as Doctors of Tomorrow, uh, women of tomorrow, robotics, chess, and a whole myriad of opportunities. We have our comprehensive sports opportunity where, we, uh, where we've experienced back-to-back -back championships over the last couple of uh, years within several of our sports program. So again, we are excited to be here. We look forward to hosting you on November 9th at our uh, parent, excuse me, at our orientation. 
And again, on behalf of Principal Lisa Phillips, we welcome you and we look forward to meeting you. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ms. Cox. So glad to have you here this evening. Uh, and our next school that we are going to highlight is Communication and Media Arts High School. Uh, and some of our some of our administrators are going to get a little more embarrassed than others. So I'm going to just introduce Principal Odom briefly. So she is a proud graduate of DPS. Um, she's had just about every academic title you could have under the sun and has now served as principal at CMA um, for the last 13 years. And I will pass it off to you, Principal Odom. Thanks for being here. You're on mute, uh, Principal Odom. Yeah, sorry. Good evening, everyone. I'm Principal Danya Odom, and we're super excited to be joining the Examination School family. CMA is a small school. We always say that we are small but mighty. We are a school that is uh, provides a very intimate, rigorous academic atmosphere. We have a variety of we have a niche for everyone. If that, if it's something that you want to do, CMA will have it for you. We have a poetry club, a robust um, sports program. Football is new for us this year. Um, well, the last few years, football has come on. Um, we have the plug, which is a student voice initiative that promotes social justice, diversity, and inclusion. We offer the dual enrollment programs, advanced placement, and honors track. We're excited about our pathway, which is a dig digital media arts pathway. Our journalism club is award winning. We offer a lot of scholarships through our journalism club. We are at a new location, which is super exciting. We are on the campus of Ludington. It was the old tab, a beautiful campus. Next year, we're excited that we'll have a competitive high school sports complex where we'll host our own football games, our track events, et cetera. So we're excited for you all to come and join us in our open house. And if you want your child in a small school where everyone knows your name, and we're glad that you came to us for your academic experience, then CMA is definitely the school for you. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Principal Oldman. Again, uh, welcome to the exam high school cohort. Um, so now we are really thrilled to shift to Renaissance High School. Uh, we have Assistant Principal Sophia Sims, who has been a longstanding member of the Renaissance um, community. So we welcome her to go ahead and share. And Mark, yep, we'll, we'll switch over to Renaissance here um, momentarily. Thank you so much. And Ms. Sims, take it away. Thank you. Hello everyone. I am Sophia Sims, one of the vice principals here at Renaissance High School. And on behalf of Renaissance High School, I'd like to welcome you to this uh, presentation. We're happy to have you. And I'd like to share just a little bit of information about our school. Um, again, on behalf of Principal Strader, I'd like to um, announce that we are now, and this is just hot off the press, um, an IB school. So just recently, as early as today, we were um, given the wonderful um, news that um, we've been approved and that our school is authorized as an IB International Baccalaureate School. So that comes along with some of the other um, accolades that we have uh, here at Renaissance High School. We are number one in the city in academics. We rank in the top 50 of the state um, academically. We have a plethora of activities, organizations, and sports to choose from. We are one of the schools that offers uh, dual enrollment, internships, as well as AP languages. We have Chinese, Japanese, Spanish, AP Spanish, French, and AP French. Um, we've just partnered with the Urban Alliance to have a program um, with them as well. And um, we have seniors who have already been accepted to colleges. 
uh, throughout the states and here in Michigan as well. We have scholarships that have already been offered to several of our students and we even have um, students who have uh, been selected for internships before internships even started uh, for the summer. So they've already been selected. They know what they'll be doing this summer. And that's just a few of the wonderful things that we offer here in addition to our um, champion uh, championship um, in athletics. We have girls PSL championship cross country team. We have a um, championship volleyball team and we're just excited that you know a little bit about Renaissance and we hope that you decide to select us when you do your application for admissions to one of the examination high schools. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ms. Sims, and congratulations on the hot off the press news. That's great timing for everybody on this call. Uh, we're now going to shift to Southeastern High School. Principal Maurice Elhamin is a proud graduate of Cody High School on the west side. He's also a Morehouse grad and a University of Detroit Mercy graduate. Um, and while he's only been at Southeastern for just under two years, he has over 20 years of experience at Cass Tech. Um, and in his short time already at Southeastern has really transformed this school um, as an excellent option, um, we hope for your family. So I'll pass it over to you, Principal Elhamin. Thank you so much. And listen, parents, you can't go wrong with any of the schools uh, listed here today across the city of Detroit. All of these are great schools. It's just a matter of what's um, best for your child. Southeastern has uh, all the different uh, programs that you see listed. We have uh, academic games, student government, National Honor Society. We have AP courses. Just recently, we've uh, gained a partnership with FCA Chrysler. They're building a plant literally uh, uh, right across the street from our school, Stone's Throw, and they're donating uh, millions of dollars to institute a an advanced manufacturing program here, which will include industry level uh, certifications, uh, dual enrollment, as well as internships. We've already had students working in the plants um, and not just, you know, putting the cars together, but doing um, um, projects and presentations. It, it was remarkable. I had the opportunity to see some of our students work in the summer and it was awesome. Unfortunately, we weren't able due to COVID, we were unable to do it this summer, but two summers ago when it first started, it was remarkable. Um, our school is relatively small. So unlike uh, some of the other schools, you know, like Castle Renaissance, uh, you can have the um, a smaller exam experience and a very family-like experience, similar to um, what Ms. Odom said about CNA, but our school is a over 100 years old and has gone through a lot of different changes. And right now we are both an exam school as well as a neighborhood, uh, exam school with a neighborhood component. So we're the best of both worlds. We have music, we have sports. We are currently city champions in football. We just won last last week. So whatever your child is looking for, we have. We we have student organizations that they decided to start. Uh, students wanted to uh, participate. There were a group of students who were particip participating in uh, meditation and wanted to share that with others. So we were able to find a sponsor for them and they were able to continue that and they were able to secure mats to do yoga and the whole nine. So if, the, if it's on the student's mind and it can make them uh, better, we offer that for them. We, uh, where we really rest our head is that we are a family-like atmosphere and that's what uh, here to support students and families. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Principal Alhamin. I uh, appreciate you being here tonight. Um, and just briefly, everyone, I I, uh, I failed to note on many of these slides, you probably have seen that each of our schools is offering their own virtual open house. So they're being humble and just really skimming the surface of all that their school offers. If you will not want to take a deeper dive to hear about their programs, um, we do have all those virtual open house dates posted on the DetroitK12.org slash exam schools website. OK, so we're going to shift over to the school at Marygrove. Um, it's absolutely a privilege to introduce Principal 
Michelle White, as you heard in her intro, she is an electrical engineer by trade, um, which seems just like the perfect pit fit for her to be at Mary Grove. She lives and breathes the mission of social justice and her engineering background. So really thrilled to introduce her to you all. Thank you, Monica. Um, and I'll say uh, good evening to everyone who um, is joining us on tonight. Um, I am the proud principal of the school at Mary Grove, uh, Detroit Public School Community District's uh, newest school. And so we have only been open for two years um, and currently have a high school grades nine and 10 located on the campus of Mary Grove College. And although the college has closed uh, down, our school is the heart of the rebirth of the campus just there, um, Six Mile um, in Livernois. And so our program, we, we like to call it a cradle to career model because we have a pre-K or early childhood center, um, which will be operated by Starfish Family Services. And then our school will be K through 12. And we're also excited about our partnership with the University of Michigan that brings aspiring teachers into our school to learn more about uh, the profession of education. Uh, we are very much so committed to social justice and we com combine it with a focus on engineering and design thinking. And what does that look like? It's applying scientific processes and to the problems that are really plaguing our communities and our neighborhoods so that we can um, solve those problems. And the adults aren't the ones solving the problems, it's the students. And so we're very much so grounded in a project-based learning experience, place-based, meaning our students are learning not just American history and world history, but they're also learning uh, the history of the city of Detroit, the state of Michigan, as well as their neighborhood. Um, even though we're only in our second year, we do have dual enrollment classes through Wayne State University, and we are looking, of course, we will continue to expand our program as we grow. I'm really excited that uh, part of our growth will include a focus on student um, and family support services where we will have a health clinic as well as a dental clinic right on campus for our families and students to um, to have access to the things that they need. Um, so it's not just an academic focus, but really a complete wraparound of services for families. Um, I spoke a little bit, if we go to the next slide, about our partnership with the University of Michigan. Um, they are uh, responsible for our curriculum and working with our teachers, as well as providing opportunities for our students to experience uh, college on their campus, as well as the other opportunities of learning and meeting uh, engineers, scientists, those who are committed to social uh, justice so that students are able to see real role models um, and to have mentors as they continue to um, progress in their high school career. We're really looking for students who are interested in STEM, who are interested in bettering their community, um, and who are just also looking for, as many of my colleagues have said, a small, safe environment. Um, and I definitely welcome you to join us for our virtual open house on November 12th, where you will be able to hear from staff as well as some of our amazing students. Thank you. Thank you so much, Principal White. Really glad to have you here with us. Um, and just part of the technical world. Um, oh, wonderful. I was going to say that as I hope you all can sympathize or empathize part of these, our new shift to the online world, there's, there's always technical challenges, but um, our assistant principal, um, Dennis Veal, we're so glad to have you. He is on and just to give you a, a, some quick highlights of, of his background. Um, so he has been at King for seven years. Um, I think really important to highlight, he's a pr passionate proponent of African-centric um, curriculum, which is really a key pillar um, to King's school culture um, and history. So um, without further ado, uh, Assistant Principal Veal, I'll pass it to you. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm glad you were able to, to join in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm glad I'm able to get in finally. Can you all hear me fine? Yes, we can. All right, amazing, okay. Um, I'm not sure if I can move this slide or I, I'm ready for the next slide. All right, thanks so much. Um, so welcome everyone. Again, my name is uh, Mr. Dennis Veal. Um, I actually, I've been in education for seven years, but not at King. Um, previously, it's, I served at Southeastern as a history teacher under Mr. Alameen. Um, so hello to you, Mr. Alameen, if you are here. Um, and so uh, I'll just jump right into what Martin Luther King uh, Junior Senior High School has to offer. 
Um, most recently, we just became a full examination school again. Historically, King has always been known for its MSAT program. So we're proud to really bring back uh, the meat and potatoes to that program. Students interested in careers in engineering um, and the math and the sciences, uh, that is the program for you. Um, we have Dr. Ward, um, who has been with the district for many years. I really want to say over 40, but I hate to date him. Um, but he is a guru in the math and sciences, and he has our department, the MSAT department. Um, we have the CISC program, uh, formerly known as a commerce program and a language program. Uh, most recently, we just changed that to highlight computer information systems as well. Uh, so students looking to go into IT, uh, we know that um, our future is going to be controlled by technology. Really, we currently are controlled by technology. Um, we are sitting here talking on a virtual platform. Um, so, you know, that is where we want to encourage our students to go into uh, fields that will be lucrative in the future. Um, also, our M3 program is called Sports Marketing, Medicine and Management, M3 for short. So King uh, has been known and is known for our athletics. Um, if you haven't heard of King for anything, it definitely would be for our athletics. Uh, we are celebrating two state championships in 2018 and 2019. Last year, we went to the state championship. Unfortunately, we lost to Mona Shores by a touchdown, I believe. It was a very close game, and we're looking to return this year. And I say all of that to say, um, you know, we're very happy and very blessed to be able to bring a curriculum piece to support the athletics program as well. So um, it's very natural for some of our athletes, you know, to want to go into this um, sports marketing, sports management program. If you're an athlete and you want your plan B to have something to do with athletics, this is for you. Um, so if you want to be a sports agent, um, obviously going into sports marketing, um, uh, if you want to be a personal trainer, you know, this will be the field for you. If you are looking to go into the medical field, um, you can study medicine under the M3 M umbrella at King as well now. Uh, we also have a long-standing uh, finance program. Uh, we're partnered with NAF um, and Ms. Spain has that. She does a, phenom a phenomenal job. Um, last year, uh, she published a book, a financial literacy book. I'm sorry, two years ago, actually now. Um, it's a financial literacy book and it's actually available on Google. Um, all of our students had a part uh, in authoring that text. Uh, this year, uh, we are uh, adopting the Math Corps program um, or called Emerging Scholars. Um, both terms or both titles are synonymous. It's the same program. Um, it comes from Wayne State. Uh, it is a math program formerly known as Project Seed as well. I'm actually a graduate of the program myself. Um, from Dorothy Fisher Middle School, we had the Project Seed program. It's a phenomenal math program. Um, it's different because instead of just teaching one discipline in math, like say uh, just algebra or geometry or fractions, they roll them all in together. So it kind of catches the kids where they are. So if you have a child that's a couple of grades behind in mathematics, um, that is the course for them. It will catch them up and get them on grade level very quickly. And the students that graduate from that program excel and have success. Most of them go on to college. So we are proud to say that we are offering math corps this year. Um, we also have the C2 pipeline, which is a after school career program. Um, that's funded and hosted by Wayne State as well. Uh, we have our world renowned band. Uh, okay, I'm gonna move on. It, it, was that a mistake or do I need to hurry up? Was that a yeah, sign? We, we just, so the Oscar kind of music is playing for you. Gotcha. <laughs> I got you. All right, all right. So, um, I'll go ahead and wrap up um, and highlight a couple things here. We do have AP courses available. 
Um, the class of 2020 had top five scholarship winners in Detroit public schools. Um, a lot of people know Ridgely Hudson. If not, look him up. He had millions of dollars in scholarships. Again, back-to-back -back state championships. Um, and we have a lot of community partnerships, including GM, UAW, uh, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Wayne State, and the Heidelberg Project. Uh, we put up two murals in our lovely hallways last year. So thank you all for your time. Please come hang out with us Tuesday, November 10th. Um, at 5.30 for our virtual open house. We'll be happy to have you and hopefully I'll have a little bit more time. Excellent. Thank you so much. I apologize to gracefully walk you off the stage, <laughs> uh, but that was the perfect interlude. Uh, to everyone who is with us this evening again, um, if there's a school that you were already interested in or maybe you heard about a new one tonight and you're like, hmm, maybe I want to learn a little bit more. Um, we definitely encourage you to join um, for any of these virtual open houses, as you can tell, we have an incredibly passionate um, team of principals um, and their leadership team, so they would love to share more and answer questions for you. But um, to just hopefully get you the information you need to, to dive into your application, we are going to press on here. So again, just a brief overview of the next 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, we're going to go over how to kind of go through the application together. Um, the requirements, the key components, and then resources that are available to you. So if you have a pen handy, if you're old school, you need to write down some notes or you've got somewhere on your on your device, um, feel free to have that handy. So how do I apply? Again, you'll want to go to this website, DetroitK12.org slash exam schools. Uh, you'll see near the top of the page there, it will take you right to um, the portal to create an account and start your application. Uh, we'll review the requirements here in a moment. Want to highlight that as you're going through your application, it's great to have an excellent draft, but remember you do need to hit the apply button uh, once you're through. Uh, and applications are available right now for February of 2021. So that means if you're a current high school student, if you are looking to transfer for a second semester, uh, as well as those looking to start in fall of 2021. OK, so application requirements. Um, let's make sure we all feel good about this. So number one, uh, for the application itself, you do need to submit uh, a 750 word student authored essay, uh, transcript report card, three references and their contact information. And then, of, and of course, everyone needs to take the exam. And we're just going to kind of dig into the weeds a little bit here together on those um, various components. We'll keep you on the edge of your seats. Um, OK, so first off, if you are a current uh, eighth grade student in a DPSCD school, if, if you're thinking, gosh, I'm not sure, that's OK. Um, you can go to our website and you can quickly look at all of our um, schools that are part of our DPSCD family. Um, if you are in one of those schools, you are um, able to opt in to take the exam that will qualify you for any of these schools to be considered. Um, you can opt in, which we highly recommend, to take the exam during the school day. Um, you can see the, the dates are listed there. It'll be sometime between November 4th and November 20th. Uh, and just know that you'll be getting more information from your school, but we really want that to be on your radar so that you know to be asking and looking for it. Um, schools will offer testing. Oops, so sorry. Schools will offer testing on one Saturday during the test window as well. Great, thanks Mark. Now, if you were like, gosh, I'm not a current DPSCD student, that's OK. We would still love to have your application submitted. Um, so if you are an out of district student or if you're a current high school student, regardless of if you're at a DPSCD high school or somewhere outside of DPSCD, um, you do still need to take the test. So we just want to make that really clear. Um, the testing dates are available between November 7th and December 12th. Um, and it will vary based on grade that you're entering into the fall. So really the moral of the story, I promise once you start your application, um, just be sure to you know, be truthful or what grade are you going into? Where do you currently attend school? And you'll actually be prompted to sign up for an exam test date, okay? Um, you can see in that box uh, down in the corner there, if you need to miss an exam, 
we know life happens, but to the best of your ability, um, we certainly encourage you to make it for your scheduled exam test date, um, but you are able to request a make update by clicking on the link um, on our taking the test page at DetroitK12.org slash exam school. So um, we don't want there to be any barriers or reasons for you to not be able to participate in this process. Um, and we've tried to put in places where you can communicate with that, that with us so we can work best with you. OK. Um, an individualized education plan. If you're seeing that and you're like, gosh, I'm not really sure what that is, um, it probably is not applicable to you and your student. Um, if it is, though, we certainly want to highlight uh, this is often known as an IEP, and it's really just letting us know um, are there certain accommodations that your student or that you as a student needs, um, specifically as it relates to your testing accommodations, okay? So as you're filling out your application, it's going to ask you, you know, does your student or do you have a, as a student have an IEP? Um, we really implore you, we really ask you to select yes if you do, and it will give you an opportunity to update that IEP document, and we know they're thick, so thank you in advance for sending us the whole thing. Um, we're happy to help if that's if that's an issue and scanning all those documents, let us know. Um, but we do ask that you upload the whole thing just so we can ensure that during your test um, that you're getting the proper accommodations. Um, in no way, shape or form is the IEP being used to factor into your um, admission for, for your school. OK, application breakdown. So um, if you are kind of no, you know, dozing off. Um, I hope I can capture your attention. This is so important. Um, it's called the exam examination high school. As you can see listed here that the exam is worth 45% of your application so that that's a significant amount. Uh, we really, really want you to know as well, though, you can see here that um, as a district, we tried to really create a breakdown that um, is inviting for all students to apply. So if you're like, man, I'm really not the best test taker, but you're a stellar student, please submit an application. There are lots of other ways that you can show that um, and, and really kind of make your case, so to say, to your school. So you can see here that the GPA is 35% of your overall application score, and the essay alone is 20%, um, so very significant. So we hope you digest that. And again, if you were kind of on the fence about um, am I good enough to apply or is this really you know, something where I could see myself, um, we encourage you to submit an application. Um, just, I'm so sorry, Mark, go back real quick. Um, I do just want to note as well, um, Principal White touched on this, but a, a really unique um, and special part of Mary Grove, the school at Mary Grove, um, is that part of the partnership with U of M and the various partners of that school, there's a really strong commitment to serving the neighborhood and the community. So if you're someone who lives roughly within a mile or roughly two miles of the school, you're actually going to get extra points um, on your application. And, and additionally, I also want to note, I apologize, I kind of breezed through that. If you're a DPSCD student, that in and of itself um, garners you a, a guaranteed 10 extra points. And that's just really a commitment to, um, you know, ensure that all of our students who are here with us right now um, really have a solid opportunity to um, to attend these schools if they if they qualify and all the other components. Um, last but not least, you see that asterisks um, again in the world of trying to submit lots of paperwork, et cetera. We know it can be cumbersome and we really appreciate when you take the time um, to read through directions and submit things properly. So just by submitting your GPA, by following all the requirements, um, uh, you are going to get a five extra extra bonus points. Sometimes I can't believe it myself, so I just have to like double check. You will get five extra bonus points just by completing um, your GPA accurately. So let's go ahead and talk about how you do that. We'll, we'll touch on that here in a minute. Okay, so completing the application, um, I'm gonna highlight that that bottom, your right hand corner first in the blue. First things, thanks, thank you, Mark. Yes, big circles. Um, first things first, when you're getting on your device or your phone, whichever your whatever device you're using, please use Google Chrome or Firefox. That in, a, in and of itself is gonna help set you up for success, okay? Let's just kind of go through these bullet points um, briefly together. So in completing your application, you certainly want to put your student's name, OK? Not the parent, not the guardian, teacher. Student's name should be on there. Uh, a parent or guardian should um, complete the application. Um, and that is just with support um, to have the parent or guardian there to support you as a student. Um, 
sometimes we have students that submit an application, the parent wasn't sure, and there's miscommunication. So um, as best you can, just make sure students, parents, everyone involved, um, that there's good communication. Um, applicants should use an email address that is frequently checked and to which the parent guardian has access. So again, students, um, we commend you if you are taking the lead on this. Um, we would strongly advise that you chat with your family, your parent or guardian, put an email in there that um, has multiple eyeballs seeing it just so there's not any information that's missed, um, especially when it comes to your testing information and certainly when it comes to uh, the notification uh, of your school placement. Um, all communications will be sent out to the email address used um, to set up the account. So again, once you start your application, you're first going to set up an account. Your username will be your email, and that email address is going to be the primary way that our office, the enrollment office, and all the schools that you're interested in, that's the primary way they're going to connect with you. Um, so just to, to lift that point up, uh, finally, we do not recommend using a DPSCD issued student email account. Okay. OK, excellent. So this is the, the transcript. So again, this is a, um, an opportunity for you to earn five extra points. All right. So um, in terms of the transcript guidelines, the big takeaway, everyone, is that we really need your last two full years uh, of um, of your academic record. All right. And um, forgive me, I'm just going to like toggle between. I want to make sure I give you uh, all the right information here. Um, but the last two years and we do just, you know, want to make note um, that grades, this is an important point I wanted to let you know. So grades from spring 2020 are not going to be included from your cumulative GPA. OK, so we know that spring 2020, there were a few things that happened. Um, we don't want that to infringe on your overall GPA, but nonetheless, the last two years. So whether you're going, if you're a current eighth grader going to ninth grade, if you're a current high school student, ninth, tenth, whatever it may be, um, last two years okay lots of info on our website we're happy to help with this process okay so if you're feeling overwhelmed um, this is where we want to make sure that you know that you're not alone um, we have lots of supports in place so we'll kind of breeze through this but just to hit on a few important ones um, first off if you are a current district student if you attend a dpsc school um, we're really excited this year that we are offering drop-in virtual tutoring sessions so if you're feeling a little bit nervous about the exam or just really want to be as prepared as possible you can see that mondays through thursdays um, really over the course of the next several weeks you have an opportunity to jump in on those virtual uh, tutoring sessions. Wonderful, and I think all of us, uh, at least us older folk, um, appreciate the power of a phone call. So if you're listening in and thinking, oh my gosh, I would really love to just chat with someone on the phone and get a little bit more clarity, uh, you are certainly welcome to, to sign up for a one-on-one -on -one, uh, phone appointment with someone from our team. Uh, you, of course, are always welcome to call the schools as well. Um, we also have this um, structure in place so that we have staff that have carved out time um, to best assist you, whether over the phone or over um, a video phone call. Um, so you can see the times listed. They're on our website as well. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, so lots, lots of text on this slide, but um, if you are feeling in a place where you, where you feel comfortable and safe to come um, in a setting to actually speak with someone physically one on one. And, and of course, um, I hope it goes without saying that all of our safety protocols will be in place, um, masks required, social distancing. Um, but that is an opportunity that we really thought was really important to offer to people. Um, so if you would like to um, receive assistance in person, you also can access the schedule on our website. And you can see we tried to offer locations that are kind of spread all over the city uh, and so we, we welcome you to take advantage of that. Um, and this is um, we're also you know excited to offer this as well. If you are perhaps someone who is representing um, a school or maybe you're part of a parent group and you're thinking gosh I would like to talk to someone but I know six other people that would be really interested in talking to someone. Um, we're happy to also set up um, a small group uh, uh, online, you know, virtual session 
um, to meet to meet with groups as well. So again, um, you, you'll see all of our contact information on our website. Um, it'd be our pleasure to coordinate that with you so that we can try and get everyone um, as much clarity as possible. OK, and I as we you know year after year we always try and pause and reflect okay what what went well this year where were the gaps what can we do better for next year um so you know we're hopeful that on our website that we try to produce some some one pager documents um that, that we hope will be helpful for you for you students and for your family so um just to highlight a couple real quickly there is a student essay rubric so if you're like I really want to know the exactly how the evaluators are going to be grading my essay. Um, we have that posted for you. Um, there's a full application calendar with all those um, supports in place. There's various um, practice links. So if you're like, you know, I don't necessarily want to go to tutoring, but I'd like to take some practice exams. Those are linked on this page for you. Lots more in-depth information on the transcript piece that I know I kind of breezed through. So that's available. Um, and finally, if you are someone who's applying on your smartphone, um, you can definitely do that. There are a few nuances, so there is a one pager that kind of walks you through it, but also feel free to give us a call if you need any support in submitting your application on a phone. Um, if you just love this presentation and you'd like to come again, you're most welcome to. Um, the next one will be Monday, November 2nd at 6, and, and we thank you in advance for, for sharing that with your network so that um, we can try and reach as many people as we can. All right, so I, all of us, on behalf of all of us here, we sincerely appreciate your time, appreciate your interest. We're so proud of our schools, of our students and our staff. And it would be uh, such a privilege to welcome your family to any of these schools. So uh, we have just about 10 minutes left. We will go ahead and open it up for uh, questions and answers. Yeah, Monica, there's there's some uh, Q&A on the, on the um, possibly on the, the that maybe Keisha or you might want to take a peek at. And uh, if we want to respond, it might be a little bit easier if there's general. Keisha, I'm not sure if you'd like to. Perfect, I do see it. Um, and Keisha, I would, if it's okay, maybe we can tag team, but I would also invite, uh, go ahead, as I say, I would invite the administrators too, if they can see them. Some of them are school specific, so Keisha, I'll pass it to you. Okay, thank you. So I'll just answer some of the, the ones that I see coming in through the chat. I've been trying to keep up with them, but they are flowing in pretty quickly. Um, so the first one is, what if we had bad grades because of online schooling for the 2021 school year? Uh, just know that we are not looking at spring 2020 uh, grades when we're calculating GPAs. We understand that that was a rough time for everyone. Um, so only the first semester, the first half of the, the 2021 school year, um, oh, you're talking about the current school year, 2021. The grades that we're asking for are actually from the prior two school years, but understand that we're not taking grades from uh, spring 2020. Um, if you're a DPSCD student, you do not need to submit a transcript. We already have your transcript, but you do need to be prepared to submit a transcript if you uh, had an interruption in your enrollment in the district at any point during the previous two school years. So if in sixth or seventh grade you attended a different school, a different school district, um, you would still need to submit the grades for the time when you were not enrolled in our district. Uh, there's a question here about when is the exam? depends on where you go to school. If you go to a district school um, and you are in an eighth grade, you will take the exam at some point during the window of November 4th to November 20th. Uh, you will have options to take the exam during the school day at your school or on a Saturday. Just contact your school's office. They will let you know when they will be scheduling the exam. If you go to an out of district school, you will select your test date as part of the application. So you will go to DetroitK12.org slash exam schools, start your application, 
And as part of that application, you will let us know when you would like to take the test. We will have test dates on Saturdays and Thursday, one Thursday um, in November and December. Okay, there's a question here about websites. Um, we can drop some uh, direct links to the school websites in question so that it's a little easier for you to navigate. And again, there's a lot of information on the DetroitK12.org forward slash exam schools. Well, everything pertaining to the requirements of, of throughout the entire process, correct, Keisha? That's correct. Lots of information, lots of resources at that website. Keisha, I did see a couple questions, and I'm sorry if people already answered them, but uh, asking, do you need to submit more than one essay or more than one application? So I apologize that I didn't hit on that. Um, it's a great question. You only need to submit one application. Um, so if you're familiar with the Common App for Colleges, just one application. Um, and you will have an opportunity though to rank your schools uh, by order of preference. And then once you rank your schools of interest, several of the schools you heard from tonight will have um, you know, specific short answer prompts uh, so they can you know, get a little I think we lost you, Monica. Yeah, I think we lost we lost Monica for a second. So that's our fun world of technology. Looks like she's coming back in. Oh. Hopefully, hopefully you all caught half of what I said. I'll put it in the chat. Long story short, only one application, only one essay. You will have a chance to rank your school. So if you're interested in more than one, you can certainly select more than one on your application. Um, and then you might be prompted based on your school, a school that you're interested in. Um, you, you might be prompted to answer some additional short answer questions. I did see one question there asked if the testing will be in person, uh, obviously, uh, or is it a virtual option? The test will be in person. It's a paper pencil test. Uh, we are taking a lot of steps to make sure that everyone is safe. We're limiting uh, the number of students in each class. We will be sanitizing between test sessions. Uh, lots of information that uh, you can also access on our website that will tell you more about uh, what testing will be like in the age of COVID. Thank you, Keisha. You're welcome. There's a couple questions too in regards to like if there's a minimum test score. So you might want to explain a little bit that uh, how, how the, the, the scoring is set or determined. So the scoring is done. Once students apply, they will select, they will rank their choices of schools. Uh, depending on which school they rank, where, um, and how they perform relative to other students. Uh, we assign students based on the highest scoring students getting their first choice first, um, then the next set of students getting their first choice, and then once seats are exhausted in all the first choice schools, then students get placed in their second choice, third choice, and so on. Uh, we normally have many more students apply than there are seats, so there are times when students don't get any seat. There are times when a student maybe really wanted to go to one school and they get placed in their third or fourth choice. Um, just know that that's simply because of how the scoring works. One thing that's really important to know is that we do offer the opportunity for every student to petition. So if you don't get into a school that you really wanted to get into, you can submit a petition um, which will be reviewed by the school that you want to get into and you can send a petition to any number of schools. So if you got into no school, you could submit six petitions if you wanted to. Um, those schools will uh, review your credentials, review what you have to say and make a decision and they do admit students through the petition process every year. Great. Well, we've got about one minute left. I don't know if you, if you need to move on. In the Q&A session, Keisha and, and Monica. 
Um, I would say we should probably wrap to keep on time, but I will continue to answer questions as they come in through the chat. So um, if anyone wants to continue to monitor it, they are welcome to do so. I will continue to stick around and answer questions. Likewise, I'll stay on and I can hop on the chat as well. Um, thank you again, everyone, so much for coming and, and we hope to see your application soon. Thank you. Thanks, guys.